Safety tip number eight, the person who mixes the tumescent lidocaine anesthesia should be a licensed professional and should not be distracted during the preparation process. While the medication is being mixed, taken out of, a, out of the vial in a syringe and injected into the bag of tumescent anesthesia, we, ha we have that person actually verbally call out what they're doing. So they would say, 30 cc's of lidocaine with epinephrine, and check that. Another 30 cc of lidocaine with epinephrine, and so on. So that they're, they're paying attention to what they're doing, and while they're doing that, the rest of the staff in the operating room will know that this, what is going on now, this is not a time to have a casual conversation and maybe distract the person who's doing the mixing. We don't want them to say, oh, I forgot, what did I do in that bag now? I, mm, I must have just given this amount. So it, it's easy for people to be distracted, so we have no unnecessary conversation during the mixing of the tumescent lidocaine anesthesia. Uh, and my suggestion is that most people use lidocaine with epinephrine prepared in a single bottle. Uh, this, is a, this contains 30 ml of lidocaine, but you can purchase 50 ml vials of lidocaine with epinephrine 1%, and that could be used to be placed inside the bag. Of the <clears throat> Putting a 10 ml equivalents of bicarbonate in each bag decreases the burning sensation that can be associated with tumescent local anesthesia. And by decreasing that uh, burning sensation, you can minimize the need for any other ancillary uh, sedatives and, or analgesics. <clears throat> in, our, in our office, in our surgery center, we do not give patients narcotics or, or heavy-duty IM or IV uh, analgesics. It's not necessary. We infiltrate very gently and carefully and do not require any other medications. But if you don't use the bicarbonate and it stings, you're forced to give patients other medications just to overcome that. I'm we have uh, often used, uh, patients are often given more than one liter of tumescent lidocaine. So you will have two or three or more bags of lidocaine, tumescent lidocaine anesthesia. Each of those should be numbered. and, and also, each of the vials that are used should be placed in, in orders uh, on a counter that can be easily seen. So we will have, for example, a row of bottles uh, of lidocaine with epinephrine. Uh, and if we had three liters of, of, saline, of saline used for tumescent lidocaine anesthesia, then we would have three rows of these vials that were empty. So that at any point in time, I can look over the counter and see that Yes, there are three rows of vials that are empty, so that actually was placed in the bag, and I know exactly what was placed in there. There's a bit of a danger if this is prepared out of the operating room because you can't see it, and it's even more of a danger if it's prepared, say, in a central pharmacy because you have no idea what the pharmacist put in there. Uh, usually, they'll, they'll, hopefully, they'll be accurate 99.99% .99 of the time, but that one time where there's a mistake, you will have no way of knowing what was actually in the bag, and it's a bit, uh, it's a bit disconcerting not having that security. Um, I do know of one event that did happen uh, in which the, the tumescent lidocaine was prepared in a central pharmacy, and instead of using one milligram of epinephrine, 10 milligrams of epinephrine were used, and the patient had a, a cardiac arrest. They survived the event, but it was uh, unnecessary traumatic experience for everybody involved. So it's nice to have it prepared in the OR. Use safety labels on every bag of tumescent lidocaine. And we're doing this to avoid inadvertent IV delivery of that tumescent lidocaine. So here is an example of a safety label that uh, we have applied to both sides of the IV bag, the bag of, uh, of tumescent lidocaine. In North, it says not for IV, so we don't want to have, see this bag hanging above a patient with, with a line going into their vein. The labels actually overhang the access port so that in order for someone to start put an IV in there, they'd have to see this. We're trying to avoid the mistake of having a bag of tumescent anesthesia 
without a label laying on a, a counter or a shelf in an operating room and the bag that was intended for tumescent anesthesia is actually used for as a lidocaine or as an IV drip. I'm Dr. Jeffrey Klein. Thank you for watching this informational video.